Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed on my last video a little bit of a tour of the uh, the bookshelf behind me. Um, bookshelves behind me. It's only a small portion of all the books and magazines and and uh, publications that I have in here. But the reason I did that one before was I was thinking of doing a review of a very large format bird book that I have here, and uh, so. I think I'm going to do that one now and because uh, one of my favorite things is having decent substantial coffee table bird books not that I ever put them out on a coffee table to look at every now and then uh, of a night time before I'm going to bed if I want to wind down a bit before going to get I, I, I get a, um, a bird book out and have a look through that and uh, and that um, sort of calms the, f the frayed nerves if you like <laughs> anyway so I'm going to start off with um, and I like these really large books. The sort of book you can't put them in your hip pocket, and they're almost big enough to to sink a, a coffee table. <laughs> but I'm going to start off with two large books that I've got. But I'm going to start off with a smaller version of a large one to start with. Very famous Australian bird book, which just about every bird lover in Australia and probably overseas, if they're interested in Australian birds, has a copy of this book. And it's called What Bird Is That? This is a rather tattered version. It's not one of the um, not the earliest version. If you had the early, if you had the original version of that, it's worth a lot of money. But this one's just a few years after the original version, and uh, it's by Neville Cayley, and it's a classic um, book on birds of Australia. It's got uh, illustrations in it and uh, very uh, comprehensive descriptions of the birds and their habitats and all that sort of stuff. And over the years, it's been revised several times, and you can get pocket editions of it and all that sort of thing. But some years back, my um, my in-laws, sorry, my wife's parents and my parents gave me a birthday present. And this was a large version. It's pretty big. <laughs> and it's a whopper. And that weighs a few pounds. And that's called Neville Cayley's What Bird Is That? A completely revised and updated edition of the classic Australian ornithological work, incorporating over 400 full page plates never before published <coughs> and it's quite a massive book that's actually a I don't know here we go so and so all these illustrations have been enhanced and, and redone and and put into this book and uh, it's a terrific book and you can get smaller versions of this large version I've got two other versions of this large format version and uh, inside the front of this what I think my yeah, to dear Jeff, with love for a happy Christmas from the two mums and dads, 1984. And there is a, a picture of Neville Cayley there. So this is a very substantial book. And um, I don't know, look at this. This is some of the, the rainbow Laura Keats that we get them coming through here every day in our tree down the back. And they're beautiful birds. I've done uh, uh, YouTube posts about the rainbow Laura Keats. But this is a fantastic book. If you can get hold of one of these nice big coffee table books. In fact, there is a friend of mine who I promised him I'd give him one a while ago. That's Glenn. If you're watching Glenn, so give me a call. And I've still got one here for you. Um, he's a bird uh, enthusiast as well. So there you go. That's that one. But I've got an even bigger one that I found in a... Um, I'll stick this over here. I hope it doesn't fall over or whatever. <laughs> I got an even bigger book here than that. And uh, in the Adelaide Central Market, I think it's still there, but I haven't been there for probably 12 months to where the bookshop was, but there's a second-hand bookshop in the Adelaide Central Market, and they have a lot of good books there. The prices aren't necessarily cheap. I usually go to places where I can get them a bit cheaper. But this one was there. I don't know how much they were charging me for it this particular day. Do they have a price on the back? I might have paid about 50 bucks for this. I don't know. But anyway, there you go. Look at that, that's even bigger <laughs> than the other one, and it's very heavy, and it's uh, Lansdowne's Birds of the Forest, paintings by J.F. Lansdowne, text by John A. Livingston. Both these authors were painters um, and, uh, and, and illustrators of birds and bird watchers, and so that's it there, and uh, I'm going to open up and show you what's inside it in a minute. 
In fact, I might take it over there and then just turn the pages over so we can look down on the pages as I turn them over. Just going to have a little bit of a background about Lansdowne. Uh, he was born in 1937 in Hong Kong. J J James Fenwick Lansdowne is his name. And uh, he died in July the 27th, 2008, and he was aged 70. He had an Order of Canada Award and an Order of British Columbia Award. So let me just give you a little bit of background off of thanks to Wikipedia. Just sort of lost a bit of my light there. Let me just change that again. He was born in Hong Kong of English parents and grew up in Victoria, British Columbia. Stricken with polio at 11 months, he was nurtured by his mother, Edith Lansdowne, to walk. A painter herself, she also provided his first lesson in painting and continued to supply whatever help she could. Later in high school, the staff of the Royal British Columbia Museum encouraged him in studying birds and gave him a job as a laboratory assistant for three summers. He held his first show in 1952 at the Royal British Columbia Museum when he was 14. His second show at the Royal Ontario Museum in 1956. He, he had his first international exhibition in New York in 1958 at the headquarters of the National Audubon Society. If you're into birds, you'll know about the Audubon Society. In 1960, he had an exhibition at the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria. Then in 1961, he had an exhibition at the Tryon Gallery, today's Roundtree Tryon Gallery in London, uh, England. From then on, he exhibited his work in centres worldwide. His creative process involved observe, observation from life and from preserved specimens. A lot of these early painters, and some of them still do, they have specimens that they uh, get the details from to, to paint these birds. His detailed watercolours of birds have frequently been compared with the work of John James Audubon. They often speech, feature a specific species against a largely white background, but his subjects tend to display a greater lifelike quality and more natural postures than Audubon's. His work is in such public collections as the Royal Ontario Museum, the Montreal, Montreal Museum of the Fine Arts, the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria, and in the collection of the Princess Royal and Duke of Edinburgh. His work was presented to members of the British Royal Family by the Government of Canada. In 1976, he was made an Officer of the Order of Canada. In 1995, he was awarded the Order of British Columbia. In 1974, he was elected a member of the Royal uh, Canadian Academy of Arts, and he died in Victoria, British Columbia, in 2008. And you can look up for yourself all the things that it says about him on, on um, uh, Wikipedia. So there you go. Um, I'm going to take this book over here now. I'm just going to stop this for a second and take it over there and try and just open the pages and just have a look at them as we go through. Uh, I love collecting bird books from other countries, not just Australian ones. And uh, I've inherited all sorts of bird books from different countries. I've got the, what the most interesting one I've got is one from the birds of China. And uh, it's a reasonably old book, but it's a bit of a mystery, the birds of China. I don't know whether there's, I haven't really gone into looking up what other publications there are, but, but I've got lots of books on birds of Africa and Hawaii and places like that. So um, I, I really love watching and learning about birds, not just Australian ones. So I'm just going to stop here now, and then we're going to go over and continue having a look at this. I'm going to put this on top of my printer that I reviewed recently, because that's a big enough space to spread it out, and we'll have a look at it, and I'll handhold the, the camera probably. Okay, we'll just have a look and see how we go with this. I might have to bring that over a little bit that way, and uh, let's go over birds of the eastern forest. These, these are birds of... Though originally this was published in two separate volumes and it was put together in, uh, let's see what it says here, into one volume. I'll just read this out here. Brought together in one volume are two classic works, Birds of the Northern Forest and Birds of the Eastern Forest, originally published in two volumes. It has been our desire to reproduce these works intact consequently. We have retained the original indexes and bibliographies for each of these titles. We hope that this new edition will bring the distinctive illustrations of J.F. Lansdowne to the attention of an even wider audience. Now, this was uh, 
Birds of the Northern Forest was first of all copyright in 1996, 1966, and then the Eastern Forest 1968, and then another uh, edition of the Eastern Forest in 1970. And so this one was published in 1989 by Arrowwood Press. So there you go. Um, so let's just turn over this. Uh, that's the index notes from the publisher. Birds of the Forest. One of the things that you notice in this book is that um, there's all the contents of some of the birds there. Um, plates, the introduction. Go over here. You'll notice that he has sketches for each of the actual colour paintings. He's got sketches and then you see the actual painting that he finished up with. So there you go. That is the... Um, this is the pied, the pied billed grebe, and there it is. There, that's the finished article, and then over here's got all the information about it. The great blue heron. I'll go over here and see what the great blue heron looks like. Oh, no, that's a green heron. With the great blue heron, there it is. There's the great blue heron, and these are quite big uh, pages, of course. And as it said before in that introduction, he did them all on a white background. The green heron, the least bittern. We have bitterns in Australia. In fact, the Australasian bittern is quite rare in Australia. I thought I'd photograph one a while back when someone told me it wasn't it. It was a juvenile Nankeen night heron. <laughs> but anyway, American bittern. So there's lots of bitterns around the world. And um, in Australia, the, the big booming noise that these bitterns make uh, gave rise to the legend of the bunyip. They sound like a bull roaring in the bulrushes, but they thought they were some um, evil creature that was going to devour people in the early days of the Australian bush because they didn't know what made the noise. So I guess these bitterns probably make the same sort of noises. The black duck. What's this one? This is the wood duck. There you go. Look at that. Such beautiful artwork these, these um, paintings are. A turkey vulture. Look at that. That's a, uh, a sharp shinned hawk. And then we come to the red shouldered hawk. Just beautiful illustrations, aren't they? So here are some sketches for the uh, blue jay. And I particularly love this rendition of this. Look at the, uh, the artwork in that and the colors. I'll just zoom in close. Just beautiful detail. Common crow, we have lots of crows and ravens in Australia. It's a good aggressive uh, shot. Look, I can give you a movie of the crow. <laughs> the black capped chickadee. Some of these birds, of course, we don't know in Australia. Uh, we have a lot of parrots and similar birds to a lot of the ones that you have in America. But uh, we don't, and, and some of the birds that you have uh, um, in America are more like some of the ones that are in England as well. The tufted titmouse. What was that song there used to be? It was in one of the, the uh, operas, I think. Titwillow, titwillow, titwillow. Someone will probably know what that was in. The white-breasted nuthatch. There you go. Fantastic. So thanks for watching that. I just discovered this was inside my What Bird Is That edition. This is when that, uh, that was the, uh, in the, one of the local newspapers when this um, book came out, when it was introduced and was put on sale. And uh, it was selling for 69.95 Australian dollars back then. Essential family reference, 832 pages, 769 birds and 101 bird call bonus. And there was something you could um, download, which I haven't done. I should look into that, but I've got good bird apps with all the, the bird calls on them. Uh, but there you go. That's when it came out. When was this? What was this? You can tell me. But anyway, we got it in 1984, so it must have been around about then. So, thanks for watching. Um, like if you like, subscribe if you wish. Uh, I'd like to know what, what your favourite bird books are um, and if you are collectors of bird books and uh, 
do you collect them just in your own country or do you spread your um, looking a bit further afield and uh, scrounge around in bookshops and see what you can find and buy things online there are some uh, bird books I've got or bird magazines that I've got that, w that were um, produced in Australia some years ago and there's a collection of them I've talked about this gentleman before his name's escaping me at the moment I'll put it in the notes underneath but there are a whole lot of uh, these magazine style books that were produced for one of the newspapers back uh, in about the 1940s or 50s or something rather uh, which are very collectible and, and a lot of the old uh, publications are really good because they have information in them that you won't get in some of the modern uh, books and information in sometimes has been lost so anyway there you go I love uh, looking at birds reading about birds taking photos of birds and so tell me what your experience is so uh, thanks for watching again and uh, I'll see you next time